<laughs> All right, the title of my bet message today is Marching Orders. Good to see you, Eric. How you doing, man? It's good to see Joe and Lorraine back. It's just wonderful seeing people coming out. So um, I think this is the safest place on the planet right now. Amen. I think this is a good place to be. <laughs> I'm looking out here and I'm looking at people that used to wear a mask every Sunday, so you must have got vaccinated. <laughs> so you're not wearing that mask no more. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I'm just glad that you're all here. Good to see you. Encourage somebody to come. You know, we've been, we're doing construction out in the children's church area, so we're only having um, preschool right now. But if, you're, if you have kids that you want to get to go into uh, kids' church, we're, we're redoing our whole system for kids' church. So we used to use planning center. Now we're using um, our Shelby system, which we use. So we would like it. If you're going to be putting kids in children's church, do they see you, Andy? Andy's right there in the sound booth. So go see Andy after the service. She'll scoot out to that table. And if you could re-register your kids so we can rebuild our database, that would be great because we, we want to clean everything up. You know, Delana put it in the Lord's heart to clean every nook and cranny of this house. We used to have so much stuff stored back here. It's all clean and shiny, nice, cleaning out all the closets, everything, you know, and we're getting rid of all the junk and we just, we want a house that's ready for the Lord to move. Amen. So, you know, prepare a place for him. Amen. I'd encourage you to do that in your home too. Get rid of the stuff you don't need. Just make it, make a way. Amen. Just clear it all out. Get rid of it. Dump it and give it to the goodwill or whatever. Let somebody celebrate. So well, today's marching orders, signs that you believe. How many of you believe in Jesus? All right. Good. Good crowd. Good sign of believers. I hope. Because signs that you believe, signs you believe, there is, uh, there is things that Jesus expects out of believers. How many of you have expectations on God? Man, I do. I come with a list. <laughs> I come with a list of promises that he's given to me that I can claim and that I can speak over my life. Amen. I'm excited about but he gives us a list of things that as believers we should be doing. Yes. There we should be, he's given us marching orders. So we're going to read Mark chapter 16, 9 through 14 today. And we'll start there and maybe we'll do the rest of it next week. So why don't you stand with me? Let's read the word. I'm reading out of the New Living. After Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene the woman whom he had cast out seven demons. She went to the disciples who were grieving and weeping and told them what had happened. But when she told them that Jesus was alive and she had seen him, they didn't believe her. Afterward, he appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem into the country. And this is the road to Emmaus in Luke chapter 24. They rushed back to tell the others, but no one believed them. Still later, he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief. Everybody say that, stubborn unbelief. Because they'd refused to believe those who had seen him after they had been raised from the dead. To Heavenly Father, as we go through these passages today, I pray that our hearts would be opened wide to what you have for us that we could receive from heaven today. That, Lord, that there would be no stubborn unbelief in any of us, God. But, Father God, that we would fulfill the signs of a believer in our walk, our daily lives, Father. We thank you for this time and your presence, your healing. Father, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, that's the thing, you know, that stubborn unbelief causes you to not believe when things happen. You know, it... Uh, because Delon and I have seen incredible miracles happen. But when you come back and tell people this is what happened, they just, just can't comprehend it because of that, that unbelief inside of us that says, ah, yeah, I don't know about that, you know. I mean, like when I snapped the, my fingers in a lady's deaf ear and it opened up, I was like, 
Wow. When I prayed for a lady that had emphysema for 10 years, she, she came to me the next day. She said, you know, I haven't been able to breathe. I, my throat was closed. I haven't been able to breathe. I said, she goes, well, when you prayed for me last night, I got totally healed. And I'm like, wow, Monica, I thought she had a cold. But my translator tells me later, he says, well, she had emphysema for 10 years. And the Lord, and I mean, no wonder she was so excited. <laughs> you know, I didn't get why she was so excited, but he said, you know, she couldn't breathe right for 10 years. And we were in an area that the coal mining was really bad. And you, you just, when I left that area, I was, I was coughing up coal dust, you know, blowing it out my nose and stuff. It's just nasty and causes emphysema and stuff. And that's where that lady was at. So you, you got, we have to move out of stubborn unbelief. Amen. We can't, can't stay there. Stubborn unbelief makes you think that, well, God may do it for somebody else, but not for me. A lot of prayer people get that way. I know God will do it for them. I just don't know if he'll do it for me. We got to get out of that unbelief. Amen. Two weeks. In two weeks, we'll celebrate Memorial Day. Amen. A day to remember all those that have gave their lives so that we have the freedom that we have today to be able to have church. You know me, I'm in, I go to places where you don't have that freedom. You have to be quiet. I remember the first time I went to one country, they're like, you got to calm down. I said, can't help it, man. I'm so excited right now. They said, you got to quiet down. They're, you know, the neighbors are going to hear you. And so he told the congregation what he said. My translator told him what he said. And um, they said, that's okay. We're the neighbors. Let him go. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, that, that day, I never seen God move so powerfully. Because these people sat on chairs that were eight inches off the floor. And when I laid my hands on their head, they were literally vibrating off of the ground. Tomorrow my hand was like this. Because they were vibrating off of the ground. It, God was moving so powerfully. A lady jumped into my arms one time. Wanted me to swing her around. So I swung her around in a circle. Then everybody jumped into my arms. And I swung them around in a circle till I'm dizzy. And then this lady come to give me a high 10. And then the couch was about where Delonda was sitting and she, she slapped my hands and she literally went flying back on that couch. I went, oh, the power of God's here right now. And then they all did this. They all went, That was their sign, put your hand here. And I would walk towards them and I'd start to lift my hand and they'd fall down. Sandy, I'd never seen the power of God move so strong. They would just, and, and one lady, she was so persistent. She couldn't get within a foot of my hand without falling on the ground. The power of God was so strong. And it's the only country I've seen God move in that way through me, that place. And, and it, it's happened multiple times there for me. And, and people fall out laughing and laughing and laughing. And, and the joy. And I ask the Lord, why do you do that? Because it usually makes me laugh first. I've had people pick me up off the floor and pass me around. Because I'm laughing. And they want it. So they, I mean, I got pictures. They pick me up and I got hands all over me. I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and then they, and one time they, I had all these people surrounding me. And everybody's just falling out laughing and laughing. And they finally took me and, and they got the people off me. I'm like, oh, good, you know. And, and the people that got the people off me jumped on me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then they took me and they put me in my chair. And then the people came behind me. The people came over the desk in front of me. They just wanted to hold on me. And I said, Lord, what, what are you doing? He said, I'm using you to break oppression. I'm like, it's incredible. I mean, I was just flying high, you know. Pastor Jesse Smith was with me. They, after that session, they took us to the little room they let us rest in. And, and the people just stood outside the door waiting for us to come out again. They just lined the hall, you know, and we started laughing. We buried our faces in pillows because we didn't want to get rushed. You know, because the people would just come in and want to touch. And it's like, whoo. 
But we have this freedom here. We don't have to hide. Don't have to be quiet. We can be as loud as we want. We can sing as loud as we want. I love it. I went to Burger King one day, and, and the, the lady says, oh, so you're back having church. I said, yeah, we are. And uh, she goes, yeah. I said, I can, we, can, we got it in English. We got it in Spanish. We got it in Arabic. We got it in Chinese. She goes, she lives right here. She goes, I only hear the Spanish and English. <laughs> like, well, that's good. You should come join us. It's good to hear it. But we have that freedom because in America because of what uh, the soldiers have done for us. Amen? Amen? But today we want to talk about the man who gave his life to give us spiritual freedom. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The one who forgives our sins, heals our body of every disease. And you know, you might be sitting here going, I haven't gotten healed yet. Well, don't give up. Keep contending. Keep contending. I don't know why, but sometimes it takes a little while. Sometimes we got to get it from God to, to where get that revelation that he really does want to heal you. He tells me that all the time. But Jesus, the one who rose from the dead on the third day, beat death and hell, amen, and is the ruler over all right now. So that one day when that... And his name is what? Jesus! So here we are a few weeks after the resurrection. We, we celebrated Easter, amen? Next week, do you know what next week is? Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday, which represents the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen, that's next week. So, and we've read today of some encounters that Christ had with people. He lays out the signs of what a believer looks like. And the first one, number one, is don't be a doubter. Everybody say, don't doubt. Don't doubt. You'll not be able to do the things that Jesus did, as stated in John 14, 12, if you doubt. John 14, 12 says, I tell you the truth. Are you ready for the truth? Yeah. Anyone who believes in Jesus will do the same works he's done, and even greater works because he is going to the Father. So we as believers are able to do the things that Jesus did. Supposedly. <laughs> Unless you doubt. Now I, I wouldn't call any, I wouldn't point anyone out here and say you're a doubter. I would never do that. But as you, we go through this, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and decide whether you're going to um, do the things that Jesus did, that if you're going to live for the kingdom of God, amen, and you're going to express the kingdom of God, you're going to express God's way of doing things, you're going to express God's way of being right, that's up to you. I'm not up here to point fingers because I'm still working on me to get rid of any stubborn unbelief that I have. You know, because when I say, hey, Jesus raised people from the dead, Jesus cast out demons, Jesus did this, Jesus did that, you know. I was reading this morning, on the Sabbath day, Jesus spit in the dirt, he made a little mud, he put it on the blind guy's eyes. He said, go wash in the pool. He goes over, he washes in the pool, and bam, he could see. And they're like, well, who, who healed you? Some guy named Jesus. I couldn't see him, I was blind. <laughs> You know, I, I, I couldn't describe him to you. I couldn't see at that moment. You know, but he made a little bit of mud and put it on my eyes. And they're like, oh, he made mud. It's the Sabbath day. Oh, he worked. Are you kidding me? He made a little mud, put it on the guy's eyes. He washes in the pool and he's healed. When was the last time you made a little mud for somebody? When 
When's the last time you encountered somebody that needed healing? Not just in the church. It's easy. It's easy to come over and pray for somebody here in the church. That's easy because, you know, that's what we come for. We come. We want to be healed. We come because we believe. And, and this, this is a safe place. But what about at the grocery store out there? What about when you see somebody out on the streets that needs that healing, somebody in that wheelchair? And you're like, eh. And you think, well, they might get mad at me. But as I said, in this passage, it refers to stubborn unbelief. They didn't believe what the people had said about the resurrection. They didn't believe what Jesus had told them before he died. So when Mary Magdalene come and told them, I saw him, they're like, eh. When the guys from, uh, that were on the road to Emmaus had that encounter, they broke bread with him and he, and he disappeared. And they're like, that was Jesus. And they took off that eight-mile journey back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples, hey, listen, I just saw Jesus. And they're like, eh. You know, and we get all down on Thomas because Thomas, you know, he wasn't in the room that Sunday morning. You know, Jesus walks through and he comes in and he shows him, hey, look here, look here. And the disciples are, oh, wow. And then they see Thomas. Thomas, you missed it, man. You should have been here for church on Sunday. Jesus showed up. We saw the, the whole prince in his hand. We saw the hand, you know, the cut in his side, we, the feet. Oh, Thomas, you should have been here. And then Thomas is like, I'm coming next Sunday. <laughs> I'm going to show up. I don't think I'll miss again. And he shows up and Jesus comes in and says, hey, Thomas, you doubted, but here it is. See, and Jesus, when he got together with these guys, he began to rebuke them. You guys, you got to believe the word. You got to believe what I've already told you. You got to believe the people of God. When they come to you and they tell you things, you need to receive it. You need to take it in. You need to drink it in. You need to get behind it. You need to go with it. Amen. But if we don't see it with our own eyes, we don't believe it in our own heart, then the chances are it's not going to happen around us. I'm just a guy that says yes. And man, Delon and I have seen some amazing things. Amazing things happen. I remember I, Peru, last time I went to Peru, we were in the jungle of the Amazon. And I said, is there anybody, anybody here in pain? And this, this old guy stands up and he's like, I got pain in my back. I said, okay. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pull that pain out of his back and we release the healing on him. And that guy started moving Jake and bending and old guy too, man, you know. Totally healed. Another lady could barely walk in. They had to help her into the meetings. And I grabbed her by the hand. I said, come with me, just walk with me. And she started walking with me and I let go and she ran back and forth, you know. It's just, it's just God. Can you believe for it? Can you believe for it in you? When you look in that mirror and you're feeling like, ah, can you believe for it? What Jesus is looking for is faith. He's looking for faith. Will he find faith when he comes back? So faith believes with action. Faith believes with action. That's that next slide. Faith believes with action. There we go. <laughs> faith believes with action. Everybody say action. action. So don't have stubborn unbelief, amen? amen? Be full of faith and believe so that you save yourself from a strong rebuke for not doing what your marching orders command you to do. Save yourself from that. Everybody say faith. faith. Now let's move on as a believer. Amen. Number two is action. You got to be a person of action. These are action orders. These are moving forward orders. And the first one that he gives us is A, go. Go. Mark 16, 15. Then he said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Everybody say go. go. Look at your neighbor and say go. 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 You got to go. Not yet, but you got to go. <laughs> and then Matthew 28, 18 and 19, it says, Jesus came and told the disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So these two passages were... It was given at the same time. It was, you know, when you, you see this bottle of Poland spring water, it's really good water. You see this. What do you see, Delanda? I see Poland spring water and water. 
You know, you see Poland Spring. But I see that it's refreshingly made. Poland Spring origin. See, we're looking at the same thing, but we see a different side to it. See, and it's the same thing in the kingdom. Like Matthew and Mark, they're looking at the same thing. They're hearing the same thing, but they're both writing down what they hear. So Mark says, go, preach. Matthew says, go and make disciples. So we got to do it all. Amen? Yeah. Got to do it all. So when you, if you took um, Jeanette's class, Synoptic Gospels, You'll find out in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that there are some things that are in all three, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is mostly stands by itself. But when you look at when you look across, these Matthew and this Mark statements, they were taken at the same time. So let's break it down. Let's talk about go for a minute. Go means to travel, to remove, to depart, to go, to go away, to go forth. Um, to make, make a journey, make a walk, take a walk, take a journey. It means to go. Everybody say go. go. It brings an action to us. It brings, it's, it's a verb that should cause action. And we need to get intentional. Everybody say intentional. intentional. About our going. Yeah. When you say, go to the grocery store. Lana says, I need you to go to the grocery store. But she needs me to go with intention. She gives me a list. I always tell her, text me the list. I'll get exactly what's on the list. I don't window shop. I just get what's on the list. <laughs> I don't look at anything else. I, otherwise, I get distracted. I'm very intentional to get groceries when I'm sent to the grocery store. You know, but we've been praying, more specifically, Delanda, that to change our mindsets. And we've been asking the Lord, how do you... What mindsets do you want us to change? Because if God's putting it on our heart, we want to know what we, we need to do. And I think, you know, as I was praying this week, we need to rethink our purposes to include God. Let God be the focus of our life. We say we, say we want to serve him and, and finish the end time task of sharing the gospel with people, but it has to become our purpose with top priority. You know, Richard came in a few weeks ago with a stack of a uh, box of um, tracks. And we prayed over all those tracks so that as he goes, he can be intentional about reaching out to somebody. I look over here and see Andy Carson. You know, he carries those little disciple um, pages with him. He carries them and he hands them out to people. He gets their phone number, an address, whatever, or email address, whatever, so he can send them another one if they want it. See, he does it with purpose. He carries them with him. He meets a waitress or a waiter in a, in a um, restaurant, and he says, hey, and he talks about Jesus, like to give you this, and he hands it to him. And I've known people, I know one lady, um, she, um, she went into the Denny's, and she wanted to give it to the waitress so bad. And she had it there. And then she, when she went to pay her bill, she paid her bill. and She said, here, I have something for you. I'll see you later. And she, <laughs> she was so nervous. She ran right out of the restaurant, you know. I, I had one lady tell me, I can't take your class anymore. This was when I teach in college at Bethel. I can't take your class anymore. I said, why? She goes, you're stressing me out. I can't, it's so hard to hand that piece of paper to somebody. But we've got to learn to be intentional about it, amen? It's, and a mindset has to change. Another mindset that we need to change is it's not about just getting people to say a prayer. In our going, it's not about, well, if you repeat this prayer after me, you're going to go to heaven. Hmm. Maybe. I know a lot of people that said the prayer ain't going to heaven. You probably do too. Because there was no transformation, there's no change in their life, there was nobody, there was nobody, there was nobody to disciple them. And they didn't get discipled. And they didn't grow in the Lord. They didn't leave the old things behind, amen? Old things passed away and all things become new. They didn't do it. Getting somebody to say a prayer is the starting line. 
It's not the finish line. It's just the beginning. Amen? When you read Matthew 28, it says, go make disciples. And this leads to, to raise people up who will do what you're doing with them. Okay, I'm going to do it. Here, come stand right here, hon. Oh, you can face the people. Hey, give me two more. Give me two more right here with her. Two more. Two more, Eddie. Two more. That's okay. You can come too. Here, you, you're right here. Get back. We're building. Come here. We're building something. Come here. You stand right here and hold your grandma's hand behind her. Okay, and then give me another granddaughter over here. Come on, Anna. All right, give me two more people on Elena. Come on, Jeanette. Come on, Victoria. Two more people. You're, you're with her. Okay, that's okay. You can be with Eddie. You can be with Eddie. Give me somebody else to come be with Eddie. Come on, I need some people. Come on, come on, come on. I need some people. I need some people. Come on. Let's see. One, two. Okay, so let's just say Delanda makes disciples out of Elena in and Don Maurice, okay? And then, um, oh, we need a lady right here on Elena. So Elena makes disciples out of Jeanette and Victoria. Jeanette's making disciples out of, I need more people. <laughs> Jeanette's making disciples out of um, Lewis and Sandy. Victoria's making disciples out of <laughs> Margaret and Elizabeth, I mean, um, I can't think of your names. Rachel, don't, don't, don't hurt me on the name thing today, okay? Come over here. You're over here. You're with behind Victoria. And then um, let's see. So Jake is over here because Charlie's making disciples out of Jake and Liz. And then Monica and Elizabeth are behind um, Elizabeth. I was going to call you Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Her real name. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, you see how fast it begins to multiply? So Delanda disciples two, and then that person disciples two, and then that person disciples two, and that person disciples two. And I mean, if Jake had his two, we'd be at 16 people already. So what, what if the, you guys can sit down, thank you. You see how fast it, it can multiply. That's how fast it can do. If we change our mindsets to just stop it, to, from stopping just to get people to say a prayer, to get the, pray, the bravery, the bravery, everybody say bravery. Bravery. The fearful won't enter the kingdom of heaven. I didn't write that. That's in the Bible. You got to be courageous. So Delana's got her too. She says, here, I want to go through this with you guys. And she starts discipling them. Takes maybe a half hour a week. I did it with a kid, half hour a week. You, you got a half hour a week? You got two people. You have an hour a week. You could do four people. You have a half hour a week? <laughs> of course I do. Of course you do. Everybody does? Everybody. Do you, how many of you have a half hour a week? Tell me you won't raise your hand no matter what. I know that. You, know. <laughs> you see, this is, what, this is why we got to change our mindsets. We got to stop thinking, oh, I don't have time to disciple somebody. I don't have time to do this. Yes, you do. To pick two people at work and say, hey, come on, we're gonna, I'm going to just lead you to Jesus. Tell them why they need Jesus. I know you're online half the time. You know, you're out there in a truck. <laughs> you're rumbling down the road. But you, you've got to, we, as, as the body of Christ, got to change that mindset that it, it's okay just to share, you know, hey, Jesus loves you. Amen. Yeah, but they're not going to say that. They're going to go, what? That guy's weird. But Mark, if you'd say, hey, let me tell you what Jesus has done in my life. And you, and, you, and you start going out with purpose instead of leaving the house blind. See, when God's the top priority, you start going out thinking about how can I win somebody to Jesus that I might disciple them? And you say, well, I don't know what to tell them. I'll give it to you. Andy will give it to you. We'll give it to you in your hand so that you can read it so you, you can't read it anymore, Margaret, that when you go out, you know what you're talking Amen. about. Amen. Yes. 
See, so we, we've got to change our mindsets to become more proactive in building the kingdom of God, not just going to the grocery store, getting what we want, and leaving. But if I'm going to the grocery store, Jake, with purpose, of God's purpose, as I'm throwing stuff in the cart, I'm looking for that person. And you know what you can do, Jake? Is before you leave the house, you can pray. Amen. And God will show you. Yes, sir. He'll show you, hey, that guy that you meet in a red shirt, he needs Jesus. God will tell you that before you go. So that when you get there and you're, you're pushing your cart and you're like, red shirt. Because <laughs> your heart starts going, hi! <laughs> red shirt. <laughs> Your heart just boom, boom, boom. It feels like it's going to jump out of your chest. Remember, Victoria, when we went down to that USA gas station one day and we sat there and we waited for the lady in a pink shirt or whatever, and then Delonda wouldn't let him go, you know. She's just... And Delonda's very shy, but when she went with purpose, man, she just took off. There's a lady in pink. Oh, there's a guy in red. See, but you've you got to break your mindsets. See, we gotta, we've got to start approaching things from a different view than what we've been re- comfortable with. We just expect everybody to come to church. Look around. It's not happening. We have to go out and get them. We have to change our mindsets to be for the purpose of God to do what he's called us to do. I know I'm missing a bunch of stuff. I haven't looked at a note in a while. Oh, yeah. He says, imitate me. Paul said, imitate me as I also imitate Christ. So that's where we want to take people in discipleship is to lead them to imitate Jesus. Amen? We don't want them to get them just to say a prayer, but we want to take them from that point of a prayer that we connect with them and that we, you know, get their address, get their phone number, whatever. You know, know, you're like, I don't want to hand out my phone number. I hand out my phone number. I don't care. I'll give you my phone. I'll put my phone number up. But it boils down to, can we get people to imitate us as we imitate Christ? You know, we're the light that is in the world right now. And we've got to let it shine. And we've got to get creative about how we let it shine. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Everybody say power. power. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. When I, when I think about it, and telling people about me everywhere, that's everywhere you go. If you just stay in Corona, that's fine. If you venture out into Riverside, great. If you, you know, if you're going to uh, Seattle, that's another good place. You're going to Kentucky. This summer, I'm, I'm going to drive back to South Carolina. But I, I get the mindset that I'm going to go with purpose. That I even maybe print out, we should print out a bunch of them number ones as we, a disciple maker, as we go across the country. Wouldn't it be great to have a mailer all the way across the country that we're having to send them out? We'll just give it to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> and then they could get number two, they could get number three. You know, I sent them all over to Africa again a couple of weeks ago. And they started teaching these lessons in Africa, in our um, Uganda church. And he said, Pastor, I'm getting such revelation right now. It's amazing. It's amazing. So I said, I'm going to send you the next set, next 16. It's amazing. But you have to know this, you're not going alone. You don't go alone. Because I'm going to send my Holy Spirit who who was with you will now be in you, it says in John chapter um, 14. It's going to be in you. So he sent the Holy Spirit to empower us to be that witness, and we just have to be intentional. Everybody say intentional again. Intentional. About where we're going and work out a strategy for our going with purpose to the glory of God and walk in the power to go and be that witness everywhere that we go. Amen? Amen. Everybody say Go. Go. That's the command. Now, as we go, speak. Everybody say, speak. Speak. You know, when you meet somebody, you might have 30 seconds, one to two minutes, you know, max. So you got to get something that's catchy. 
for that one, 30 seconds. Hey, I see that you're uh, on crutches. You know, the Lord healed me of this before. Or I see, hey, that your kid's really, really rebellious. Let me tell you what God can do. <laughs> you know, that's a good place at a grocery store. <laughs> The kid crying, I want that, I want that. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Well, you know, whether you're in the grocery store, the gas station, break time at work, the restaurant, think of some pointed questions, put effort into it. Don't go out there and go, oh, I met this person, I don't know what to say. Prepare, get ready, amen, get ready to share something. Looks like you need healing. Can I pray for you? What's the worst that could happen? Nothing. How about, hey, I read the Bible a lot. It talks about eternity and eternal life. Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Do you even know about eternity? Do you even know that there is an eternity? Do you know that there's a heaven and a hell? Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Questions, pointed questions that will open up the door. You only have 30 seconds max. I'm telling you, I put one to two minutes, but I'm thinking it's less than that. 30 seconds max before they like, yeah, I got to go. Now I'm in a hurry. I don't know, you've seen the meme, the chicken knocks on the person's door and person opens their door and he says, I'm here to tell you about Jesus. And the person takes off running and the chicken's running after him. You know, I'm here to tell you about Jesus. People will run from you. That's why you got to get some questions. You got to think. You got to meditate. Lord, how can I have the words of life to open up to somebody? How can, what can I say to them that's going to get them to stop to want to even listen to me? That's going to want me to talk to them. Ask the Lord, do this. Ask the Lord for a word of knowledge to open up the conversation. That's what we did when we went down to the USA gas station. It's not USA anymore. But we prayed and the Lord showed us somebody in a pink sweatshirt. When we, when we went down there, it's like, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And they're like, what? Man, we were praying back at the church. And as we were praying, the Lord showed us somebody in a pink sweatshirt at the USA gas station. So God sent me here to talk to you. Is there anything you need prayer for today? Why can't you do that? Don't tell me you're afraid. Maybe you are. Something that'll capture the, their attention. See, because we've been given the power through the Holy Spirit being in us to be able to be used everywhere we go. So let's, let's just stop right here. Everybody say speak. Speak. And that's what I say to you, speak. The words that you say, the Lord will confirm with signs following. Your words, the Lord will confirm with signs following. What you say matters. You come across that person, oh, I'm so sorry you're in that wheelchair. Oh, may God just cover you. No, may God get you up out of there. Amen. Step out in faith. Amen. People approach you. I, I remember one day uh, I went into the office. This was long before I was a senior pastor. And the administrator says, I said, hey, how you doing? She says, oh, I have such a headache today. I went over there, prayed for God, healed her, and she's like, what'd you do to me? I mean, because it just totally left. That's what we should be doing, right? We should be just extending that healing touch to people. You don't need me. You just need you full of the Holy Spirit to extend yourself, to reach out and to touch somebody for the King of Glory, amen? Why don't we stand to our feet right now? Let's ask him to fill us right now so that we leave here fully equipped to do that our mindsets are changing, that our mindsets are going with purpose, that we do the things that God has given us marching orders for, to go and to speak. Just lift your hands up today. Hallelujah. Just repeat after me, dear Heavenly Father. I thank you for your son, Jesus, that he died for me, that he rose from the dead, and he's sitting at your right hand. 
Jesus! Jesus! Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Empower me me. to go and to speak. speak. Give me purpose today. today. Purpose for the Father. Father. Help me to not lose sight (laughs) of what my marching orders are. In Jesus' name. name. Amen and amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, you've heard your people today. And I pray, Father God, that you would truly empower each one of us. That, Lord, that you'd refill each one of us. That, Lord, you'd redeem each one of us. That you would heal each one of us, God. That you would do a supernatural work in us, Father. That as we go today, give us the words to speak, Father God, like never before. That, Lord, that you give us words of knowledge, words of wisdom from being in your presence, being in your spirit by walking in the spirit. And I pray today, Father God, that you just fill each one of us overflowing with who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Now just begin to pray in the spirit right now. Just let it flow out of you. Just fill us today, Lord. Fill us today, Lord. Yes, show that we be empowered to go. We be empowered to speak, Father God. We be empowered to step out and use the gifts, God. Let it flow in us, God. Empower your people today, God. Lord, that they are confident in who you are. Confident in who you are, God. Confident to know that the Holy Spirit is with us, that we can go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, Father God. Lord, empower us today, Father God. Remove all fear by the power of the Holy Spirit over us today. And Lord, as we go out of this place, let us go with intention and purpose, God. That we be purposeful, Father God, in our walk with you. We'd be purposeful in finishing the end time task. Oh, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father God, for your marching orders today. Oh, hallelujah. And I send you today by the word of the Lord to go and to speak in Corona, Riverside, United States, and to the end of the earth. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go healed and made whole today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah.